Hey all you hot listeners, this is episode 45 of Husband and Wife Talks. This episode, we'll be discussing some things we've been up to lately, like we took a nice hike in Colorado, so we'll be getting into that. And then also, we did a full episode on recommendations, so that'll be fun for you all to hear all our recommendations, um, so stay tuned. Hello, Marta. Hi, Adam. How's it going? It's going great. That's good. You're over there on the couch now. I can actually see you. You're physically there, unlike I'm last episode. I'm always on the couch, besides huh? last week. Last week, you were in Baltimore visiting your parents. That's true. Got to be there for around their birthdays. That was very nice of you. I try to be a good daughter. Yeah. So, yeah. This is episode 43 of Husband and Wife Talks. Happy you all are here. I guess we'll just get started rolling right into what we've really been up to lately. Um, I'm trying to remember, you you explained last week your whole flight scenario to Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Did anything of mention? You went blueberry picking, right? I did. We picked a lot of blueberries. What's, consider, what's considered a lot? Over 21 pounds. 21 pounds of blueberries. Yep. And you only brought back like a two Tupperware containers of it, and I'm sure it didn't even make a dent. Probably didn't. I almost didn't even take it because I didn't have space. I took my tiny suitcase, but then I switched with my parents at their house. So I had space. Oh, I wish I took more, though. Mm. They're so good. And how many, like, bags? Was it four bags worth? Four bags, yeah. So you just fill it up to the brim? Almost to the brim, yeah. Yeah. Were you shocked that you got that many, or is that just another day picking I mean, blueberries we were, It was nice you. out, and we just were enjoying it, so we kind of just were picking. And we knew we were going to get a lot, because each bag holds three to five pounds. Mm. And we got four bags, which is 12 to 20, I guess. We went 21, so I guess we stuffed more into the bags <laughs> than they're technically supposed didn't break. to hold. That would have been devastating. But was it, I'm assuming it wasn't or the conditions were really well because i remember last time we were actually up there we looked at that farm for picking and only blueberries are fair well my mom went once when it said online that it was fair and she still got a lot yeah so i think it just depends on fair maybe for normal people is uh, you don't get that as much but for you blueberry picking experts you and your mom you can just pick as many you can pick 20 pounds, for example. Yep. In a two-hour span. Was it two hours or was it less than uh, that? Closer to an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Wow. Yeah. Speed demons over there, blueberry picking. You bet. It's always impressive when I pick blueberries with you, how quick you are. Well, I have a lot of practice. So, mm-hmm. so I don't know if people can tell while listening to, to us, but I feel like I personally feel a little tired today recording this recording on uh sunday the 21st and it's gonna be released on the 23rd so happy 23rd anybody um why are you giving me that weird look i'm just saying happy have a happy 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 tuesday oh people usually say like happy and then a number if it's like a birthday so happy 23rd it could be somebody's birthday out there you don't know i don't know that's there's definitely somebody's birthday is definitely on the 23rd so i'm just being polite to all of them that's true and celebrating their tuesday anyway but (laughs) i feel physically drained today because uh we'd like on sundays to do quote-unquote active recovery or we've been trying to do this where we're not uh, legitimately going to the gym and working out but we're still trying to be active and today we took a hike well it's more of a walk (laughs) took a hike yeah we hiked um a trail called waterton canyon right waterton canyon trail yep and uh yeah, it was six six point two miles total, there and back. Yep. Uh, the normal one is it's like six and point some miles, the full hike and back. But there's like a midway point. You mean that twelve? Because he said we did six. Six total. We did three miles there. Oh yeah, but three the back. But I mean, full there. mile is yeah. six there, six back basically. Um, but we didn't do that. Uh, I'm kind of a little. Th- uh, I'm happy we didn't because. Uh, my legs were feeling it at the end because I always forget to stretch for some reason, even though we're still being semi-active. You should always stretch, folks. That's a good tip. Always stretch before any activities. Unless you're, like, going to the mailbox to pick up your mail. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I don't really consider that a active activity. Yeah, but if you're planning on walking six miles, I think. I mean, that's a 10K. People train months to run a 10K. We, we didn't walked. do much running, but. <laughs> well, we didn't run. We hiked. But mm-hmm. still, the distance, I mean, is significant. But it was very beautiful. It was a very beautiful walk. I enjoyed it. it was There's a river or would you, not really a river, creek through it. Uh, like through the mountains and stuff, and it was it was very pretty. We saw some sheep as we were walking on the highway. A little too close for comfort. It was a mommy and a little baby. All of a sudden, in the uh, they went down to the stream. They went from like the top of the hill and went down to drink water from the stream. Then all of a sudden, the baby comes sprinting out and just sprints down the street towards us, kind of past us. And then the mom looks over and sees the kid and like, geez, I have to go after this thing. And start slowly trotting past us. And I was a little worried because you never know what animals are going to do. Um, so that was an interesting experience. Also, I just looked it up and the body of water was called a river. Oh, it was It a was river? called the South Platte River. I feel like those terms for bodies of water is just thrown like loosely because it all could be different. Like the Delaware River that I'm used to is so much wider than this considered river. But... I don't know what the categories are. I don't know what um, specifics make a certain body of water a certain thing. Because you can have a, a lake being a small lake that's in that state park that we went to um, that people go to to pretend it's a beach. And then there's other lakes there's that are there's one gi- little patch of sand there. <laughs> not a beach. It's it's not, not a beach. Then there's lakes that are gigantic and you can't see the other side. So, like m- most normal lakes, we think yeah. not the tiny ones that are in co- Colorado. Well, mostly the ones in Colorado are tiny. Hmm. Do you have any more comments on what we've been up to? I mean, um, I have another a quick lessons learned for my trip home from Baltimore. Okay. Very quick, like two minutes, two to four minutes. Okay. I don't know why you feel so self-conscious about telling <laughs> your stories. I realized my last story was very long, and I'm sure people love listening to you, Boo Bear. Just don't be a sh- don't be don't get in your head. Just talk. So on my way home, I got I flew Southwest, and I didn't. I don't never pay for early bird because I don't want to. Like I'd rather save the money mm-hmm. personally. Um, so I always at, I either always check in 24 hours ahead myself, or I ask someone to do it like if i'm driving or i'm out somewhere and i can't um so anyway i got a pretty bad boarding group like late b's very late b and i was like okay i typically like the aisle seat but i'll really take anything like just glad to have this flight depart on time mm-hmm. i'd sit on the floor if someone gave me a seat belt not really but yeah, definitely anyway. not safe do not do that <laughs> So I was boarding, and I'm like, thank goodness, we're taking off on time. I'm getting on the plane. The lady goes to scan my boarding pass. I always do it on my phone. And she goes to scan it, and instead of, like, the ding, it's the ah. I'm like, are you kidding me? So then she's like, step off to the side. I'm like, until what? The other 50 passengers (laughs) or whatever, 30, however many there were, board, and then I board. And she's like, uh, go to the ticket counter. They'll get. They'll help you out. I was like, I've never had an issue with my. I've never mo- seen that issue before. I don't. I've never seen anybody else deal with that. I don't know, but I don't know what happened. Um, I'd be kind of curious if there's a reason that people like if the brightness on my. I mean, my phone was on full, hmm. full brightness and all of that for them to scan it. But anyway, so then part of me was really mad because I already had a really bad boarding, and then I. I mean, I had to go to a ticket counter, and who knows if there's already people being helped there. So I went over there, and I was like, hi, I was trying to scan my boarding pass to board, um, but unfortunately, it got it didn't work, so can you print reprint my boarding pass? And then gave her my name and all of that. And she's like, here you go. And then I pretty much, like, booked it. I mean, it wasn't far. Then I ran back. It was kind of awkward because other people were still boarding, and I couldn't just stand around because the lady wouldn't have noticed me. So I literally just walk up, walked up to the lady in front of the other people boarding. Nice. That's what you got to do. I mean, what was I supposed to do if I just wait around and I'm like, hi, hey. No, I'm uh, serious. That's what you uh, have to do. Have, yeah, you have to. No one else is going to 
hold your hand and tell you what to do. So if you don't do it yourself, you're literally going to be the last person on the Especially plane. Especially on the East Coast. <laughs> so I finally boarded. The paper boarding pass obviously worked. And then I still got an aisle seat. Not like the last row in the back either. It was in the middle. Nice. Was it, it an was, exit row? It was an exit row. It was where the flight attendant was standing though. So I think a lot of people just keep walking. But I was like, girl, is that seat taken? And she said, I didn't say girl. I said, excuse me, is that seat taken? And she said, no. And then I was on my way. Hey, old lady, get out of here. So less, I don't know if it's a lesson really. I just learned that I'll probably have a paper copy of my boarding pass just but- in case. Because you can always get it at the front. Like Southwest has all those kiosks. Uh, that's true. Just as a um, precautionary measure. You don't have but to I, wait in that long line where people check their bags and all of that. You can just... For some reason, I always thought the whole purpose of security when you put your phone down is to check the validity of your boarding pass. I always thought that was a reason. that was the reason you put your phone onto that thing that scans it. Yeah. Is to make sure that it works. Kind of, and make sure it's a valid boarding pass. So I don't know. I, I guess it that's not exactly what it does. I don't know what the purpose of that is. I just know that it's never happened to me before, and it did. And now I'm kind of rethinking the whole... But the thing is, I always use... Unless I travel internationally, because I don't know if I land yeah. in London, if my phone's going to work. I mean, you don't need Wi-Fi to get your boarding pass, but... You know, I just like to have mm. the paper version. But domestically, I never, especially I, in the last few years. I have a feeling this is just a fluke thing that happens and <laughs> uh, only happens to a few people. And then those few people are telling stories why they never use their phone specifically because of this <laughs> one scenario. I, I'll still use it. I'll just, if if I remember, I'll uh, go and print a boarding pass. Well, and if I have time, you know, throw mm-hmm. back to last episode or call back to last episode if I have four hours at the airport. If you, if you know, you know. Yeah. If you don't know, go listen to episode 42. Mm-hmm. Especially the beginning. Great story. <laughs> I enjoy listening to it. I thought it was... I don't know. I thought it was interesting because I went through it, but maybe if someone <laughs> doesn't Because I was care, saying it, I thought it was interesting. I mean, if you don't... No offense, but if you don't care, why are you listening to our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> if you get annoyed by stories that we share, then maybe... Yeah, that's a good it's portion of the beginning for you. That's the beginning portion of the story or of the podcast. And most of the time, is just us talking about what we've been up to. Yeah, which do we even? Oh, you, yeah, you explained the hike. Yeah, we did. I uh, liked it. It was. Um, we talking about the hike now? Yeah. The oh, hike. Okay. I was gonna mention, so I got a new app. I I'll mention the name of it later. So teaser, but on the app you can rate the hikes that you do this might give it away yeah Um, i'm I'm sure (laughs) if you give away the functionality i'm sure everybody probably will know what it is oh you okay you hit your face (laughs) yourself in the face just hit my chin with the mic um i just wanted to say i was tracking our hike on an app and it asks you to say like rate the hike out of five stars Mm. so then I'm usually pretty generous. Like when I rate things, I usually just give things five unless it's horrible. And then I give it a one. I don't really have a. Oh, you're you're that type of audience where it's one or the other. It's binary. Yeah, it, it's definitely binary. So then I'm going to rate the hike, right? And I click the different stars and it says what that then what the star indicates, I guess, in terms of your impression of the hike. Mm-hmm. So one. What, do you remember what one star was? Yeah. Was, oh yeah something like that <laughs> two was i guess i should have looked it up because i am forgetting but anyway first i was just gonna give it a five and five was like oh yeah amazing i'll I'd do, do it, it again, again. <laughs> and while we were walking on the hike adam's like yeah i really want to do this again i really want to do the 12 mile like the 12 mile round trip instead of the six mile round trip that we did <laughs> and i literally go yeah, I wouldn't really do it again. Not because I didn't like it, but because there's so many hikes in Colorado, I don't feel the need to go back to one because She's, there's others that I want to explore. She says this, folks, but we've been to Rocky Mountain National Park about five different times. It's a national park. And plus, several of the times we went were when people visited us and we had guests. Mm-hmm. So when I have guests, I want to take them to a legit, nice, well-known place. Not like... Hey, let's go to this park that's just a patch of grass and 
Well, yeah, but a lot of the parks here are very nice. That's that's exactly what I'm saying. I don't want to go to the same one twice. Besides a national park where I'm taking like this was a state park. Friend A, friend B. Yeah, but there's other <laughs> state parks. Anyway, my point was that I was gonna give the hike five. Then I decided I'm not gonna do it again. So I bumped it, just it down to be a valid. three. So then I looked at the four, and the four was. Why are you looking at me? I don't remember. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Anyway, I gave it a three because. How about you look fine. up the ratings when we talk about it in the rec- the the next section? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But that's basically our what we've been up to lately. March is getting back into the gym this week since you are gone for a whole week. How is that? I want uh, because I know you've been sore this whole week. That's true. I'm not sore today. Okay. I. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I said, just because you're not sore today doesn't mean you weren't sore the whole week or the good portion of the beginning part of the week getting back into the swing of things. True. Yeah, Monday was rough because <laughs> I flew back Sunday night and then Mon- Sunday night we didn't really get much sleep. So rolling into working out Monday and for the first time in a week, which I wouldn't think taking a week off because I was never really someone that was that super regimented about working out but now that we just have this routine and we like re- really like this gym we go to we just go consistently but monday was rough i kept mm. blaming it on the altitude but then i remembered i only really spent three or four days in baltimore and then santa fe is actually a higher altitude than denver <laughs> so if anything i should have been more prepared <laughs> Yeah, I think you're used to the altitude not by now, so I don't think that's going to affect you going away for four days. I think it takes six months for your body to adjust the changing altitude. So, like, if we theoretically move back to the East Coast, it'll take six months for our body to adjust back to that altitude level. So, for the first six months, we'll be superheroes? Let's not go that far, but we may have better endurance. Cool. But I think we have better endurance now regardless because we've worked out so much yeah since. gym rats yeah uh but yeah i think it's time to move on to the, the our main portion of this episode don't you think i agree so i know before our hiatus we uh would do these podcasts and we would have a section at the end for recommendations but we've realized for the past few ones since coming back we've gone longer than expected and we didn't want to just shoehorn in recommendations at the end and only just glance past them so we decided maybe do a whole episode on recommendations that we have uh for plenty of different things like books and stuff like that and if we have more information about the book or the recommendation we'll probably explain it here and so i'm pretty excited about this i think we plan on doing this once i don't know like a quarter or something where it, recommendations build up so we're not just floundering trying to figure out oh crap what am i supposed to recommend this week you know but uh, now we can build them up and actually talk about them more thoroughly i think so yeah, for sure and we broke them down into certain categories that you'll see uh i guess you want to get started on the first category would be books did we, how exactly do we want to do it? Do you want to just roll through and just highlight the ones that if you wanted to make an interesting point about or what? I mean, I'd like to talk to all of, about all of them. All of them? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to go first? I have a lot to say. Uh, or do you want me to go first? You can go first if you'd like. Okay. So I'll, I have four books on here um, that I've had read recently. Um, three of them actually were in audio form and one of them was physical form. Uh, first one I think I've already mentioned on the podcast before is Atomic Habits. Uh, I thought it was very uh, enlightening on learning how to better, I guess, put yourself in good positions to continue with habits. Where in, in Atomic Habits they try to uh, condition you to do small things each and every day and try to give you techniques of how to do it. For example, um, habit stacking is a big thing that I've been using now is if you have a consistent habit that you always do that, you know, you always do. And if you, uh, and you have a habit that you want to start doing, so say reading a book or working on a project or writing or something, you put that, you say you're going to do that habit right after you do the habit that you always do. So for example, I, started the habit of after I get home from the gym, 
I plan on uh, taking a shower, and after I shower and put on uh, my nighttime clothes, and if I, I go to, the, I'll just go right after I put on those clothes, I'll put it, go right to the desk, and as soon as I go to the desk, I pull out my laptop and work on my coding If you guys project. are watching, because Adam's pointing throughout the apartment, so you can really see, get a visual for where <laughs> I, I know you're making fun of me because it's an audio <laughs> podcast but it just helps me when I, I know I know I'm just, I'm just thinking thoughts around. okay helps me think um so that's a, an example that I learned from atomic habits and the the interesting I would say enlightening thing when he talks about it is that a lot of times habits um if you want to start a habit a small habit uh, it goes a long way but you have to basically cast votes votes for it Every single day you do it, and over a period of time, if you cast enough good votes to do that habit, you'll start just getting into the swing of things. And if you cast enough bad habits where you don't want to do certain things, then you're not going to do it. So it's kind of like a voting mechanism he tries to portray habits as. Um, but recommend if uh, you want to learn more about doing things in the future, uh, recommend that book because it, it helps you snowball your habits into a uh, continuous daily routine. Um, another thing that I learned from that book is trying to condition your environment to better suit you. So if you don't want to, for example, if you wanted to start eating healthy, when you, you want to build the environment in your apartment of healthy food, you don't want to have junk food in the cabinet. You'd rather have all veggies and meats and um, good food in just your kitchen so you're not tempted by the idea of um, snacking on something poor so it's just making the environment conducive to you or whether that be going to say a coffee shop if you know you work better there and you'll actually get your work done instead of staying in your apartment or your house because there's so many other things going on Um, so that's one I know that was a little long long in the tooth for just one recommendation I'll try to go a little quicker uh, digital minimalism is another book that I've already talked about and I'll actually talk about more because there's another uh, section of this recommendations that this will feed off into so I'll leave that for later uh, the Teaser. Un- <laughs> the un F yourself podcast or not podcast book um, I listened to the audiobook it's I think the guy is Scottish Um it was only three and a half hours long, so if you have an Audible credit, check it out. It's really, it's uh, I think, a good book if you're the type of person that needs tough love when it comes to getting stuff done because he kind of is very brash and very straightforward. I mean, if you look at the title, it's pretty obvious that he's that type of person, and he tries to just slam it in your face that it, a lot of the times if you want to get stuff accomplished, it's all on you. You can't. Uh, uh, expect anybody to give you any type of handouts you can't expect anybody just magically show up and give you a wish like a genie it's all uh, basically on you so you have to make an effort and then the final book is uh called valiant valiant ambitions um for any historical buffs out there who's into history this is about the revolutionary war at least a portion of it um it, it it, should, it gives examples between – it kind of follows George Washington and Benedict Arnold, Benedict Arnold being the quote-unquote famous traitor uh, to the American Revolution, but it wasn't always that case, so it kind of shows the descent of Benedict Arnold and why he finally decided to go and try to betray America. And then it also shows the kind of the progression of George Washington because – George Washington is like a famous, obviously a founding father, famous figure, kind of like a how was like a heavenly figure in history, and we always portray him as that. But in this, it shows his progression from becoming um, kind of a very gung ho, aggressive general, uh, trying to get everybody and all these militiamen to follow his lead to finally becoming the person that we know in the history books so i feel like if anybody's interested in that and the dynamics that was going on between congress and all the states um because this is before the constitution was created and everything and the article of confederations and all that jazz um if anybody's interested in that and interested in learning all the type of battles that are happening during this period um i really like this it's written by nathaniel philbrook phil Phil philbrick i think that's how you say it um and he has in a lot of the sections he has maps of all the battles that happened and he does a good job of explaining it and he does it in 
you're learning stuff, but you're also, it's kind of done in a story format in the same way. So it's really well done. Um, I plan on reading the next one that's about in the Revolutionary War. Um, so yeah, check it out. That's my final book recommendation. On to Marta, because she has a few. Woo! So I'll start with the most the books that I read longer ago and then work my way up to oh did you have any comments on what i said book wise no okay sorry i just wanted to (laughs) give you a chance to speak i didn't want to be taking up the. i mean it's your recommendation i don't want to be like that sounds boring (laughs) (laughs) was any of them sounding boring i'm assuming it's the last one you not into history as much as i I was dozing off a little bit but i'm back whoa just because sometimes i'm not as into history you were falling asleep as i was talking joking (laughs) I like to, you know, have fun, joke around, <laughs> keep the mood light. Dozing off. My goodness. Okay. Maybe Continue. <laughs> maybe that was too far. I don't know. Not <laughs> sure. Whatever. I'm offended. Sorry. <laughs> baby, I'm sorry. Okay. Baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> Marta's singing now. Let's get back to the recommendations. <laughs> I wish I didn't do that. Anyway, so my Not fir- cutting it, just FYI. Anyway, so my first recommendation is really books just by this author um and it's malcolm gladwell so i've read i think four of his books so far yeah i've read four of his books uh blank outliers david and goliath and the tipping point those are the names of the four books and i really like the way they're written they're all i would put them in the psychology category i guess yeah that's a good um because they're not really self-help but they're sort of helpful because he explains the the idea behind his books you know yeah um but so i've read all four of them i really like his style of writing because like adam said it's not self-help but it is psychological and he in all four of these books i think he has one or two or maybe several more that i haven't read yet um but he uses stories and research and data to prove his point so it's not really some authors kind of beat around the bush and are really vague um, but I like that he uses data when it's appropriate and gives real life examples and stories uh, from people that he's interviewed himself or researched himself so it's very direct and to the point point. Um, and I've really learned a lot about different things I mean I'm not going to go into detail I just really recommend Mal- Malcolm Gladwell if you like psychology or if you're looking for new nonfiction books um, what would be the the one you would you resonated most with. Which one did you like the most of his books? Um, I think I liked Outliers the most. Mm-hmm. I ra- I'm looking at my own Goodreads account to see how I rated them. Which, just like I said with the hiking trips, I've rated a lot of the books I've read fives. <laughs> which, looking back, is not helpful for me to figure out if which ones I liked more than others. Because there's no way that I loved this many books. But regardless... I really liked Outliers because essentially Malcolm Gladwell in that book, he describes this. It's called Outliers, colon, the story of success. And in that book, he talks a lot about one-offs and outliers in today's society and the professional world and sports and schools and different a lot of different scenarios. And he explains that a lot of times success and kind of what, make someone successful isn't always what we think there's a lot of data that he uses in that particular book to explain different success stories i'll leave it at that but i really liked outliers um it really left me going like whoa that's really interesting and i remember uh, throughout reading the book i would tell adam a bunch of stories um and pretty much just spoil the book for him because he (laughs) hasn't read it yet but I finished that one in four days, so I was I really could not stop. Wow. And then the next book I recommend is one I just finished yesterday. No, I finished it on Friday. And oh, it's so good. I it's got called the, like I got the brief synopsis of this book. It was like a movie for me. I got the just the little spark notes of it. I mean, I think in the beginning when I was explaining it to you, I did a better job, and then I just started going off in a million different directions because I was just really excited about it. <laughs> um, but hopefully you got a good uh, summary without having to read the book yourself. Um, but anyway, so it's called The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. 
And essentially, it's about a family that moves to Alaska in 1974. And... The main characters are a um, family. So it's a dad who was a former POW in the Vietnam War. And then a mom and they have one daughter who's 13. Uh, but I really like the book because I really didn't know how it would end at all. Like mm-hmm. I... For books and movies too, for any sort of entertainment, I like sometimes rom-coms because they're easy to follow and I know how it'll end. But also it gets kind of old just knowing, oh, these two are going to fall in love and whatever. Um, But this book, I truly did not know how it would end. It was really interesting because it was, so it started in the early 70s in 1974. And then there's two other time periods that it kind of, it kind of jumps, I think, four or five years from the first to the second section and likewise from the second to third. So it was just really good, really well written. Um, a lot of different plot points. It's definitely not a light read, but it's not like scary. There are sad moments. There's happy moments. But if you're looking for good fiction, I really recommend that one. It was sus- suspenseful. Is that what you would call it? There were definitely some suspenseful moments. Yeah, I think when I was describing it to you, I told you that in certain moments during certain plot points that happened, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> like it just shocked me. And usually when I read, I don't really feel that strong of emotions but it i feel like the way it was written and the whole plot it just made it feel kind of wish i looked over more often while you're reading while i was reading along with you well not the same book but we're reading in the same area Mm kind of wish i looked over to see if there was any facial reactions from you because i feel like i at a certain point i got one like shock face (laughs) i saw from you at one at one point but you never made any sound that would visual uh, that would cue me in to look up yeah, I don't really make a lot of noises when I read, but I'll make... I just make a lot of faces in general. So if you know me, you know I like faces. Well, making faces. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but my third book that I recommend... Well, I guess the first two were um, not books. But anyway. Yeah. My second actual book that I recommend... I'm still reading, but I'm obsessed with it. And it's called... The Happiness of Pursuit by Chris Goulibé. No. Goulibé. I don't know if it's um French because the B-E-A-U is a very French-looking thing to me. But anyway. Yes, so, I can't help with this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I took French, so you'd think that, you know, maybe. Uh, but you, we get the gist. You got, I gave the title. What's... What makes you so excited about this one? Why would you recommend it? So first of all, I was looking... I'll give a brief background. So when I was looking for more books to read, I checked out my favorite... One of my favorite travel sites that I mention like literally every podcast. It's called Earth Trekkers. Yeah, we don't need to give them a recommendation. <laughs> They're recommended every single week, it seems. Um, But so it's a travel blog and I was looking for book recommendations and I was interested to hear someone who uh, travels frequently their perspective on their favorite books because I figured they might be related to travel um, and I've never really read that many travel focused books so I thought it would be cool so this book was on their list and um, the woman who runs the blog she her first sentence to describe the book was if you have a big dream you should read this book and I was like, yes, who doesn't have, I mean, hopefully everyone has some sort of ah, dream. Ah, girl. But essentially, and I'll read, just quote this from the Earth Trekker site because it's easier. So the author sets out on a quest to visit every country in the world by the age of 35. He succeeded, and while he was on the road, he learned that there are a lot of other people out there on, oh, there's a typo here, out there on a personal quest of their own. I'll fix it. Um. But essentially, it's a memoir of his own experiences and other people's stories that he's met and interviewed along the way. And on this site, she describes it as dangerously inspiring, especially if you have a crazy idea in your head that just won't go away. And I couldn't describe it better. I'm already halfway through and I love it. I love books that just hype you up and help you feel inspired because nowadays it's easy to get down 
or in your head about different things, especially with social media and, you know, just horrible things you see on the news sometimes. So it's nice to read a book that really lifts you up and pumps you up. So very, I recommend it. I'm not done yet, but I know I'll like the ending too, unless. Just takes a nosedive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those are my few faves. And um, I wanted to mention another blog that I like. She's a more of a lifestyle blogger. If you're a Bachelor fan, it's actually Sean Lowe's sister that has this blog. Sean Lowe was the Bachelor um, like Few five, years. six, seven I don't know how many years, years ago. Uh, but her the website is mixandmatchmama.com. And every month she puts together her favorite books. And then every year she has her favorite books out of the year too. So I like uh, The Great Alone, which I recommended, was actually a book that I got from her recommendation and then a few others that I've also read and liked she recommended. So I kind of trust that we have similar um, book uh, opinions. You like the same books. We like the same books, um, which is why I get my rec- some of my recommendations from her. Same tastes. Taste. There we go. Jeez, that was <laughs> pulling teeth. So I think I'm done with my book category. Yeah. Do you have any other additions you would like to make before we move on mm, not that i can think of mm, what a great segue into the food <laughs> category <laughs> that, was, that was pretty good good job thank you you can start off okay i'm gonna start off with the second thing on i almost said the menu wow you're starting <laughs> off uh, the only thing i can speak to is the second thing really fine i'll start with the first since thing. the other things you added to the list okay fine um <laughs> you can still talk when i talk okay <laughs> fine fine um, fine so the first thing is costco so it's a- another funny backstory um adam and i a while ago maybe some point last year we were talking about how when we we live in an apartment right now so we were talking about when we finally buy our own home meaning a house or a townhouse anything bigger than an apartment um that we would like to either belong to Costco or Sam's Club or whatever wholesale store is closer to wherever we end up buying one day. And we both decided that, yeah, it doesn't really make sense now to have a membership. Because Still we, not sure why we came to that conclusion, but... We were like, oh, we don't have space to store stuff. Like, it's not like our apartment is filled to the brim. We have plenty <laughs> of open space where we can store. I mean, it doesn't look the best to have food kind of out in the open well, it's not really out in the open, but you know what I mean? Not in a separate pantry all closed off. Um, so we kind of came to this conclusion and then I don't really know what happened. I don't know if we were talking about Costco or if we were reading something, but then we <laughs> literally just one Sunday. we started eating healthy and we didn't want to, uh, we rather, we realized it's probably be quicker to de- buy in bulk, right? Oh yeah, that makes sense. That's the other thing. So we kind of switched from finding really specific recipes and recipe books that call for super random ingredients that are like $20 at Whole Foods to just eating more chill foods, not chill like cold, but just (laughs) chicken and veggies or a meat and some vegetable, not super fancy things. Not that we don't make recipes, but if we do then we'll have to go out and get specific stuff but at least now we have we're now in a habit or routine where we have certain things each day so it just makes it easier and kind of just we know what we're supposed to do yeah so then literally within probably two hours we made the decision to get the membership bought the membership online went to costco realized going to costco on a sunday afternoon is the worst idea because it's like a zoo Literally, it's like a zoo because everyone brings their children and everyone's children are just running around. And I'm like, put your kid in your cart, in your cart. That's why they have the seats there. That's where your kid goes, not running through the aisle like crazy maniac. No sympathy for Marta. I, the carts are massive. I don't want to accidentally run into a three-year-old and then the mom be like, watch where you're going. And me be like, watch your kid, lady. Just... I'm nervous to hit some kid. That's why I want them Mm. in the cart. Fair. And people push their carts fast, and it's like cutthroat in there. (laughs) Sunday afternoon, no joke. You got to go in the morning or... Yeah, but let's get to why we actually recommend Costco, shall we? So it's just 
for some products it's cheaper like i think buying meats in bulk sometimes is cheaper not sometimes well it's cheaper than what we were paying at whole foods for sure i think Um, it's cheaper at it cheaper than sprouts as well and okay with other because it had organic chicken but it was only a certain price that's a lot better than where you would get um where you pay per pound basically at other places that's true and then i found the fruit we prefer to buy at a smaller grocery store because we don't need 10 pounds of apples. We can't but eat na- apples that fast. Now you go and search the deals for fruit in different stores, mainly Sprouts now. Yeah, there's a local grocery store called Sprouts. So I'll just go look at the weekly ad and then just pretty much get a few fruits that are on sale, which I do because I like all fruit pretty much. So for me, it's not like I'm limiting myself. It's just easier for me because I don't have to make decisions. We just get three pounds worth of bananas or yeah. six pounds at costco because it's cheaper that way but yeah definitely would recommend costco because you can buy a lot of things in bulk like our seltzer water we do um a lot of since we're using almond milk a lot now with the way we're eating um that's very beneficial because you use in your oatmeal every single day your favorite part of breakfast oatmeal right no okay uh (laughs) speaking of seltzer water yeah speaking of seltzer water we'll talk about hard seltzer now called uh Yum. brand brand called truly i think it's relatively new i didn't really hear much about it until now people are drinking it constantly um but anyways uh, curious what it is it's basically just alcoholic seltzer water same kind of alcoholic content five percent as uh beer um so all the adults that are listening this is i recommend this to you if you're below the age of 21 not recommended for you i uh, just want to put that out there um but uh, I think it's very delicious. They have different flavors like any other seltzer water. It has one gram of sugar, um, 100 calories basically because they had certain type of hops. I forget what it's called and there's sugar in it obviously. But it's a lot more refreshing in my opinion than any type of beer that you could have in the summer. Um, tastes better in my opinion. Um, so that's how I would recommend it. And now these brands are out selling some craft breweries and – um, I know in Boston, uh, I think it's truly that's outselling Sam Adams now in a certain month. It outsold that's crazy. it. Um, I mean, it goes to say somebody made a better version of beer. <laughs> it's not as doesn't fill doesn't fill you up at all because it's mostly water and uh, it tastes better in my opinion. I have the different flavors, so if you want different, I mean they're mostly fruity because it's mm-hmm. you're not really gonna infuse water with like cucumber. Well, cucumber. Cucumber infused water is good. I'm trying to think of a bad example. Speak to the mic, please. It's like barely catching. No. Eggplant. You wouldn't infuse water with eggplant. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they're all refreshing fruits. Of course. Pineapple. <laughs> they're going to choose flavors. I don't know what my point was. Eggplant. <laughs> eggplant water. Who's Ugh. thinking of that? I have no idea. Um, Sweet potato water. I don't even know what my point was at all. Broccoli water. I'm trying to think of the worst possible water flavors you could have. But this is genius because personally, when I go out like to hang out with friends or at family, th- well, at family things, I feel like it's always the option is wine or nothing. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really like red wine. I like the pink stuff with a lot of bubbles that tastes really sweet, kind of like juice. Do you have that? It has a lot of sugar in it. Which my aunt and uncle that um, we hung out with yesterday, they bought that wine that i specifically like i'm like thank you so much i could drink the whole bottle but this is a family gathering and i want to have a little bit of decency (laughs) so i'm not gonna do that um and i don't normally do that so i don't want to like come Mm -hmm. off a certain way you're not getting swasted all the time no okay never yeah that's basically never um but yeah i just want to add on truly is great and there's another brand called white claw that we haven't tried yet we saw at the store today, but we still have plenty of cans here, truly. Yeah. I think that there's we've only drank three so far, but it's good. We just don't drink it during the week. Although sometimes when I open the fridge during the day to get lunch, I see it. And I'm like, what if I accidentally <laughs> had that instead of water? I mean, it's what, 5% alcohol? Yeah, you'll be fine. but It would just be a really awkward mistake. Mm-hmm. If you drank too many of them, then yeah, you would eventually feel it. 
Uh, I guess we can roll through the quick, the next one rather quickly. I remember you added this a while back. Nothing else to say besides chocolate-covered macadamia nuts. They're so good. Mm-hmm. Because so your, your parents brought them back from Hawaii, right? They did, When we visited yeah. them. And they were delicious. Mm-hmm. Not, Ooh, not the best for you, but they were still very good. The uh, Hawaiian Host is the company that makes the chocolate-covered macadamia nuts. And the Moana Loa... Loa. You can get both. Wait, they have these at Target? Oh my gosh. Okay, after we're recording this pod, I'm going to Target to get these. Okay. Um, I'll be here. (laughs) Yeah, he'll be here uh, editing, which obviously if you're listening, he already finished editing. (laughs) Oh no, they don't have it in stock. Except for I saw that Podbean now is doing a, they're starting a beta period where you can live stream your audio for people to listen to. Well, live and they can you can call in and stuff like that wow so that's maybe, cool maybe maybe when we become big we'll do a live stream audio podcast but until then i think actually speaking of uh not really speaking of live stream at all not relevant not relevant <laughs> to what you said just trying to have a segue <laughs> um but a few weeks we might have a guest on the podcast maybe maybe yeah just if teasing if it doesn't happen then sorry to. we teased you yeah but uh yeah Okay, I guess we'll move on to the next section. Uh, sh- we just called it shopping, kind yeah. of purchasing stuff. Uh, it's kind of ironic because of an idea that we're going to be mentioning. But wrote, it was going to be funny if I if we didn't mention it and we just rolled right in. But oh, sorry, I didn't. Uh, they don't know it. It's okay. Yeah, just give the first one. First one, Merrill hiking shoes. They're great. I don't know how much more you can say. We didn't have, didn't have hiking shoes. We decided to purchase some. Um, Merrill brand is highly recommended, um, and we got them from Amazon. They were, I think, not the normal price. They were a little bit off. Or Amazon was cheaper than the yeah. Merrill store itself. Um, yeah. So, I like them. They're, they're very good, comfy. I don't get nearly as many blisters as I used to with my running shoes, but um, that's about it. I guess the next two you can talk to. I just want to talk about hiking shoes. I've been... So I hiked uh, the Machu Picchu trek three years ago, and I did it in sneakers. And now looking back, I feel so silly. Why hmm. didn't I buy hiking shoes? That was a 40, almost 50-mile trek in a Ooh. few days. Were your feet hurting real bad? Did you get a lot of blisters? I don't think I got blisters, but my feet hurt because mm-hmm. it was a lot of walking. Yeah. Looking back, I don't know what I was thinking. I just wore my Under Armour sneakers, and I've, I don't know. I've all the hikes I've done... That's the most absurd that I didn't have sneakers or hiking shoes for. Yeah. So th- I'm very thankful for the, that purchase that we made. Um, next two, I'll explain the recommendation. One is, I think, mostly for women. Um, I would guarantee that most men, if not all men, would not be interested in this. But the store loft, which is... Not judging anybody. I'm not... Yeah, I'm just <laughs> saying that probably only women are interested um, but the store Loft, which is a women's, like, kind of casual clothing store. I think it's a spinoff of Ann Taylor. If you've heard of Ann Taylor, Loft is associated with Ann Taylor, I believe. Um, so the Loft outlet online and in store always has sales. Um, especially, I think, around different holidays. And even right now, I just checked the site and they're having some sort of sale. But I love the Loft dresses because they're so... They look nice, but they're also, you could dress them up if you wanted to. So they're nice enough. I mean, certain styles are nice enough to wear to work, but also they're not so formal that I can't wear them to hang out with friends or just mm-hmm. be casual, um, but still have like a cute look. So if you're looking for dresses that aren't breaking the bank and you don't really care about any specific brand or things like that, I would check out the Loft, either the Loft website or the Loft outlet. Um, you can get dresses for like well under 50 bucks i've gotten even some for 20 something which mm-hmm. i always say is a really good deal because the dress is a top and a bottom so where else are you going to find a shirt and shorts slash pants for 20 i mean i'm sure some places you could but the point is i think it's a good deal so i buy mm-hmm. a lot from there <laughs> well not a lot i buy okay anyway <laughs> <laughs> um my shop go right about, go into your shopping <laughs> list each time no i just wanted to say that every time i go i spend a lot but i don't go very often yeah so i can't say you know you I mainly shop. just get dresses there unless yeah. they have a sale on shorts yeah oh yeah i bought some shorts 
Um, next recommendation is for people that do online shopping. So I don't really do online shopping a lot besides Amazon. Um, but I learned about this site. It's called, it used to be called Ebates, but now it's called Rakuten, R-A-K-U-T-E-N. I have no idea why they changed that. I don't that. know. Ebates makes sense because it's online. It's like rebates, but, but Ebates because it's electronic. on the internet. Um, but essentially what e- legacy Ebates was or Rakuten is, if you shop online, for example, um, Vineyard Vines or Shutterfly for the pictures, picture making uh, website. So what you do is you go to the site and then you click on the Shutterfly or Vineyard Vines or whatever. They have tons of different um, stores that are compatible with it and they all just give you cash back. So, I mean, you just do your normal shopping, but just like your credit card gives you cash back, this Rakuten site gives you cash back. So, for example, Vineyard Vines, I'm on the site now and it says 8% cash back. So, if you spend 100 bucks and your credit card gives you whatever, 1.5%, You'll obviously get your, not obviously, you'll get your 1.5% cash back to your credit card that you, you know, normally get when you spend on whatever you buy. And then you'll get 8%, which is $8 from 100 into your Rakuten account. And then once a quarter, they send you um, a check for, you know, whatever you made. So it's kind of cool because you don't have to be a huge shopper online. But even if you are, I mean, if you are, it makes especially more sense. But it's just cool because you're just doing your normal shopping and you're getting extra cash back i always thought it was a scam until a blogger that i actually trust Mm -hmm. was talking about and how she thought it was a scam and you always see the commercials on for ebates i just hate how they portray it they portray it as i'm making money you're not making money it's cash back yeah if you're spending money you're not making it if you're just buying stuff if you're investing it then yeah you're making money but yeah i think i used it more so during the Christmas time leading up to Christmas, buying different presents. Um, But normally I don't really shop that much online besides Amazon. But I recommend it. I mean, it's nice to just get extra cash back for Mm. really no reason. We have two more sections to get through. and Not a lot of time because we're already almost at 52 minutes. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, Shocking that we're going along again. Okay. So the next idea (laughs) is really funny. Um, so, <laughs> so this section is ideas kind of just, uh, I guess uh, idea, the right term, but sort of just thought provoking things or maybe not thought provoking things, but things you can do that we sort of recommend getting your mind into a different state. Well, and one that we did. Yeah. Two. Why well, did both? You've done a whole month. I'm getting there. Oh, okay. Um, so the first idea is doing a no spend month, which is probably ironic, like, yeah, you guys just talked about shopping in Ebate slash Rakuten. Why are you talking about a no spend month? So one month we had, I think, just different expenses um, more than like the typical. And we were like, whoa, our credit card's a little just more than usual. And we were both feeling like, oh, you know, it's just better to be in the normal groove than have expenses more than you expect. Mm-hmm. So we decided, or really, I think I was my, it was my idea. And I recommended it to you. <laughs> but we were both on board, which is Pat what Pat yourself on the back, why don't you? <laughs> um, but doing a no spend month, not that we spent zero dollars because obviously we still have to eat. So we bought groceries and we bought whatever like necessities we had in the month. But we just tried to not try. I don't think we went out once. We didn't really buy. I don't think we bought any clothes or any really junk. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, I liked it because A, our credit card statement this month now that because we did it in June, so now July reflects that. It was so much better. I was like, wow, incredible. We should do this every month. Wait, no, we can't do this every month because we have plans and things we need to book and all of that. But we I just... have this thing called life going on. <laughs> but I recommend, even if you don't do a whole month, like a f- two weeks, a week, if you're someone that, you know, spends a lot of money and you kind of want to rein in your spending habits and keep better track of where your money's going... I liked it because it made me realize that a lot of the stuff, even little things that we spend money on, we don't really need. So it was just eye-opening and... Yeah, I mean, you're basically saying only spend on... Necessities. Yeah, necessities, like food and 
stuff like that. And you're, obviously, you're if you're renting an apartment or you have a mortgage, obviously pay on that. But just the extra stuff that sometimes you you just don't think about paying for, and then now it'll just bring your mind to focus more on that excess stuff. So going forward, you can you know think about it more in certain terms. It's like, oh, do I actually really need it? Because I did on no spend month, I didn't go to this place i didn't go out to eat and i was it was a lot better or things of that nature or just being reining back your process of going out and spending if that's something you're interested in if you're fine with your budget and all that then i don't recommend it because you'll probably just be upset the whole time yeah (laughs) if you're happy with where you're at fine with me we're not going to tell you to change who you are or what you're doing if you're happy with it and it's working for you um so I guess in the next thing, sort of, this is what I was talking about when I was talking about digital minimalism and how this idea branched off from that. So a lot of digital minimalism, the book, was talking about just how social media nowadays is, especially on our phone, has become more of an addictive habit and how a lot of times these app companies or the people that make these apps are trying their best to make it as addictive as possible because, of course, they want to get you to their app so then they can sell advertisements and have a whole larger user base because nowadays extreme people check their phone 80 times a day. Um, and evil people that are conscious about trying to not check their phone, that, uh, according to uh, some study they, did, they talked about in the book, um, you still check your phone on average 40 times a day. <laughs> You reduced it by half, but it's still a lot. Um, so I'm now in the process of uh, doing kind of – I think they recommend it in the book um, of taking a whole month of not having uh, – it's kind of just um, – they do recommend having like quote-unquote dumb phones now where it's like flip phones where just text or calling. But they he understands that smartphones have – very they have more functionality for other things besides social media so he doesn't recommend you just throw away your phone and get a dumb phone you can always just you know get a duplicate sim card and stuff like that if you want to go that extreme of a route what i did personally was i deleted all social media apps from my phone i deleted all games i deleted all the stuff that's on there that's crowded that i don't use that just fills up space um and i only kept the essential essential stuff that i normally check a lot that makes my life easier because the whole point is that he's trying to explain of getting rid of all that stuff on your phone for a month is that once you get back you can figure out and you can list off okay what's the most important thing that i definitely need on my phone and then if it's an app then figure out is that the best application that you for that purpose so he gives an example so i want to have facebook on my app because it helps me better connect with my family and sees pictures of uh, my little cousins or something like that that's like the example he gave but he said if you think about it is that really the best way that you can connect with your family and be better connected he's like no you can take take your phone Dial their number that you have and call them on the phone and chat with your cousin and chat with like the little cousins. So I have a question then for you. Because it's a quote unquote better connection. Question for me, yeah. So for your, an example for your family, you have what? About 30 plus members Mm. on your mom's side. That's just like your mom's siblings and their kids and their grandkids and all that. So... How do you keep up a relationship with that many people? Wouldn't having face like a lot of your cousins have Facebook and they all have kids and isn't it easier to follow? People had large families before social media and before smart media. Yeah, but a lot of people media. used to live a lot closer together too. Yeah, and, and they and people that moved away, they would call more often. So do you plan on calling more often? Maybe. I'm just curious. I don't know. I don't feel... That's the thing. I don't feel the urge to try to... I don't have the urge to look at pictures on Facebook that often. I just I, think it's fun to look I, pictures of the kids. And I also... If you want to look at social media, it doesn't just because you don't have it on your phone doesn't mean you can't use it. You could set a time that you have during the week to actually go and check it out. The whole cool. purpose of this book... 
if you let me explain, the whole purpose of the book is to not have it on your phone so you're not checking it 80 times a day when you're just passively looking at your phone and scrolling through to pass time because you have you have nothing to do so you just want to look at your phone because you're so addicted to it. So you're like, oh, let me look at Instagram. Look through that. Oh, uh, let's go to the next one because I'm waiting at a commercial for the TV so I want to look at this. Or I'm waiting for something to happen at work and I'm bored so let me just check this on my phone. And it's just casual scrolling that doesn't amount to anything and it makes you – and the book shows statistic, ugh, statistics that you become less happy the more you use social media. Uh, and the fact that it's on your phone makes it even more likely that you'll be less – you'll be more – or you'll be unhappier because you constantly check and you're just in an anxious state to see the next thing or learn about the next thing. So that's what I'm trying to do, just get rid of social media on my phone so I'm not just mindlessly checking it when I don't need to. Makes that's sense. all I was trying to explain, and I was just giving the example of what the guy was talking about. I don't I don't know how exactly I'll do it in my personal situation, but I'm just going to try my best. Makes sense. Yeah. Can we move on? Yeah. Last yeah. category? Yeah. Apps that we're liking, or that we're kind of liking slash using lately. That are more useful than anything. More useful than just what you were just talking about. Not mindless scrolling, but actually having some sort of functionality. I'll talk about the first one, which is one I was alluding to earlier. Um, talking about the hike and tracking the hike. But All Trails. I knew All Trails was a site, but I didn't really realize they had an app. But essentially, you can, wherever you are, you can search for hikes that are nearby in the area. And you can filter by easy medium hard or it tells you as soon as you search what level it is and then when you click on the different hikes there's different um, there's a description of the hike so if you're looking for a two mile or one mile family friendly relatively flat hike then you could easily find out what is out there that you're looking for because it says hey this is a six mile um, strenuous hike whatever and then they also describe if it's a loop hike or if you're hiking to one point and then hiking back from this along the same trail that you hiked um, to get to the halfway mark. Um, so I like it. We used it today to, um, you can record your hike too and kind of follow the map, which is cool. So I'm excited to use it on future hikes too. Um, and I'll talk about the third one too. And you can take the other two if you'd like. Sure. I um, think I've explained this app before. Oh, other. that's true. We don't have to go into too much Libby. Detail. You use it for library books. You can get Kindle books, and um, sometimes there's a lot of holds. Like your hold can be on for ten weeks, but they have a lot of. You can put a different, a lot of different library cards if you go to different libraries, and you can put it on there and try to search Kindle books that are available for different library areas. So or audio books. So that's our another recommendation. And then another one is an app called Think Dirty. Um, it's a funny title, but. Essentially, Think Dirty is a free app. Yeah, you put a winky face in, <laughs> in <laughs> the Google Doc. This would be funny. Um, but essentially, it's an app where the whole point is to expose how many different types of chemicals and just really nasty stuff is in uh, a lot of household products that we use. So any types of cleaners, toilet cleaner, shower cleaner, Windex, um, shampoos, conditioners, lotions, Really, anything that you either put on your skin, in your skin, or you spray around your house, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, and so, with that app, you can either scan the barcode of a product. There has been a few products that I scan, and they're it's just not in their database. Um, but mostly, I've had success. Or you can just type the name in, and it pops up with the name of the product, and it gives the product a rating. So, I believe the lower the rating, the better. I think 10 is the worst and it also shows you colors, so 10 is a red color, and then I think 8 through 10 is red, 5, 6, and 7. So We've, is it counting, like, the bad products in the the substance? Is that what the number corresponds to, or is it just a rating? So that's a good question. Um, when you click on a product, they have the list of ingredients in the product, so I'm looking at a specific product right now. And then for every ingredient listed, they have... They have three categories, red, which is dirty, yellow, which is half and half, mm. and 
green, which is clean. I'm not really quite sure what half and half means. Maybe that it's not fully a dirty ingredient, but it do- isn't quite a clean, fully non-toxic mm. ingredient. Uh, so essentially based off of all of the ingredients, I think it gives you the rating of the worst one because I'm looking at one now that has 27 ingredients and all of them are green except for one, which is a five, which is that medium category. And the whole, the product at overall is rated as a five. Hmm. So I'm wondering, I don't know if it, if they kind of do the worst number is the number that the rating gets. Kind of makes sense if that thing is in there and it's that bad. Just because you have other good stuff in it doesn't mean it outweighs the one substance. Yeah. And especially with chemicals, I mean, you want to be careful. I don't think just because you have mm-hmm. one thing that's bad, you should assume that, oh, it's fine. Like, it's not going to affect my skin because that one thing could be more powerful than all the other gunk that's, or not gunk, but the good stuff, quote yeah. unquote, good stuff that's in there. And that's why you're now doing more organic stuff. Like you make more organic things. Lately. Well, not organic, but I make my Homemade, own. Homemade, yeah. yeah. So you know the stuff that's going in, like detergent, toilet cleaner you've made. Yeah, toilet cleaner is actually easy. Um, I think there's a, uh, a recipe or a website online where this person recommends e- easy DIY cleaners for different areas of your house. And I think for toilet cleaner, she uses a little bit. I probably shouldn't say this. I'm not positive. I think it's a little bit of white vinegar and a little bit of baking soda. Mm, But you don't mix it beforehand. You mix it. In the bowl? You throw it, both ingredients into the bowl, and then they fizz up. Mm, Um, Makes sense. And then you leave it there for 10 minutes, and then you scrub, and then. Is that how you do the generic volcano experiment? You put, like, baking soda with vinegar, and then it shoots out like a volcano. I could be wrong. That sounds right. When you do it in the bathroom, in the toilet bowl, it fizzes up a little bit. But I really like the app because it's really eye-opening to see, hey, this product that I've been using for forever is actually an eight. And personally, I don't want, I mean, if I can avoid certain chemicals, why would I not? I'm not yeah. saying I'm going to go buy a alternative that's 100 bucks, but there's plenty of companies out there that are really mindful about the ingredients and they do list them out and things like that. And something I learned is that the packaging is packaging in general is very deceptive, but <laughs> almost especially for different products that are related to your skin and your face because they'll put in something that says organic, but in the context of skincare, I don't really know what that means. And there was actually one thing that I bought. I don't know if it was a lotion. I don't know what it was, but I bought it because I thought it looked, oh, hand soap. It was a Mrs. Myers brand. I bought I, it. I was going to ask you, is there something that was surprising with something that you thought was good for you, so to speak, and then it turned out that, oh, that's actually not that great. Yeah, so the Mrs. Myers brand, which if you've heard of it, it's I think they try to advertise themselves as like a clean whatever brand. Mm-hmm. But they have, I'm looking right now at the app, and they have three or four, a few hand soaps and a countertop spray that are both eights. So I'm like, why would I pay an upcharge for Mrs. Myers when I can get something that's also an eight in terms of chemicals and that's just like a cheaper, more generic brand. Yeah. Um, but then some of Mrs. Myers products are threes and four. They're lower on the scale. So I think it's very dependent on sometimes different um, scents. Scents. Yeah. Because scents are so powerful and who knows what they really use. So if you're interested in being more kind of, what's the word? Proactive? Natural minded. Yeah. And kind of knowing what's in your product. Just check out the app. It's free. I mean, and you you can learn a lot really. Good. Last one. Last one. This kind of, uh, you put this on here. I've been using this app for a while, but it's a podcasting app. Hmm, Funny enough. So you may be listening on to it right now. So you may not need to know this (laughs) recommendation. Um, but the podcast app is Overcast. I, I've i always used, well, not always, but I used it for a long time ever since the Apple Podcast application changed. Uh, it used to be more simplistic, the Apple Podcast, but now the way it's set up, it's very weird how they have it set up. And not it does, intuitive. And it's hard to find different podcasting pages, like their homepage where it's a list of all of them. I mean, I know you showed me where you have to go down to like, 
you gotta click on the episode, scroll all the way down, then click on a few more things, so it's a little more confusing, but Overcast, more simplistic, kind of looks like what uh, Apple Podcasts used to look like, but before they went down. More sleek, I think. Um, has different features like smart speed, where it tries to cut out different audio spaces in um, just in the feed. So if there's a silence like this, most likely it'll pick up where I just started right there. So uh, something like that. Uh, and then, um, yeah, it just has cool features. You can make playlists. Um, and you can also get all your podcasts online, too. So they have a... Their website's not near. The website kind of looks like a mock of what you would see on your phone. It's kind of one of those type of websites, but you still can subscribe there and listen to podcasts that you've subscribed to on your phone if you connect your account and stuff. So, yeah, I think you started using it too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it more than Apple Podcasts. Cool. I guess uh, that's it for our recommendation episode or the episode in general. Do you have anything more you wanted to say? Any more recommendations off the top of your head? Nope. Nothing? I'll save them for the next quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I looked up real quick during the podcast. For some reason, the way like the way you're sitting and like the outfit, it kind of looks like you're a flight attendant. I don't know why. It was a brief. You're wearing a what? t-shirt, I know. But it was just the way, like the blue that's going on. I don't know. I just, yeah, yeah. I, I I know you're confused, but that's so what just was the what point of? Was there something else somewhere else you were going with that? No, I just wanted to point out that I thought real quick that I that I look like a flight attendant. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Super random. What's the problem? That only took like two seconds. It wasn't no, a long you said story. I looked up, so I thought you were going to talk about something you looked up on the internet. Oh no, I looked up like physically looked up. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, sorry for the confusion, folks, but this has been episode 43. Thank you all for being here. Remember, share us with your friends and family. We appreciate it so much. I think we're going to put a lot of links in the description for different recommendations that we had, I would think. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't hurt. I may just copy and paste all the recommendation bullet points directly into the podcast episode, so if you're interested in checking it out. Check it out there. Um, you can email us, hotpod at gmail.com. Follow on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all that jazz. It'll be in the description. Oh, Marta has a blog. A new blog post coming out when they hear this, or is it going to be a little after? There'll be one this week. There'll be one this up the week of this podcast. Yeah, like this, releasing, you know. This Tuesday week. Yes. Okay, sounds good. I'll keep you to it. So will the hot listeners. Sounds good. Okay. I guess it's time to say bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye, y'all.